Hi, and thanks for joining this webinar. Today we'll be introducing C3, a community engagement software platform from SRA. The structure of this webinar will be a brief introduction to community engagement as we see it, and how C3 fits into the picture. Then, with the theory quickly out of the way, we'll give you a demo of the C3 solution. After the demo, we'll cover off on some important things you need to know, including how much C3 costs. But a few housekeeping tasks before we start. Ironically, considering we're talking about community engagement, this will be a one-way webinar. That is, we won't be time at the end for questions. This is primarily so we can ensure we stick to time. If you do have any questions, we'll give you um, a couple of opportunities to see what our, our feedback email is, um, so please feel free to shoot them through. Uh, and we may actually distribute some of those to the broader community so um, you can see what sort of questions are being asked. Once this webinar is completed, um, we ask that you complete a, a brief three question survey at the end um, to help us uh, uh, with our webinars. Um, and also that we'll send you a link to the recording and confirm contact details should require more information. Okay, let's get started. This quote from the point of view of a mining company president could be applicable to anyone who operates in a community, be it mining company, government department, local council or airport for example. Organisations should be mindful of the communities impacted by their day-to-day -day operations. They should listen, interact and provide mechanism for their community to use at any time to interact with them, especially at the exact time they feel impacted. This is community engagement. Community engagement is about being active and seeking input and in interactivity from the community not being passive and making it difficult for your community to make contact. Community engagement takes many forms. More often than not, we find the scenario outlined in this slide. A wall exists between the organisation and its community. This wall often takes the form of a contact us or feedback form or a complaint form. The community sees one of these and thinks, black hole. I love my feedback over the wall, often in a time of heightened emotional state and may or may not receive a reply, let alone some action. The process of lodging the feedback itself right at the start of the engagement, even though it's provided in the best of intentions, can be the start of a disconnection between your organisation and the community. So that's one perspective of the interaction. We've often found that a contact us or feedback page is emailed to someone or someone's. Hopefully that person is in the office, not on holidays. Then, if they do get it, it requires discipline to respond immediately to the community member and properly manage the feedback, which is usually done in a spreadsheet. So what is introduced are multiple points of failure based on a reliance on manual management of a case. So why is this scenario a problem? Cases are often lodged in a heightened emotional state, so problems can start right at the beginning if there is no or slow acknowledgement of the feedback even being lodged. This makes people feel like they're not being heard, that your organisation doesn't care. To compound the problems, it's often difficult to follow up and get a status of your case or cases. Most time it takes a phone call, hopefully you get the right person who then may or may not know something about your case. With your organisation, there are problems too. Ultimately, acknowledgement and convoluted follow-up procedures often causes angst to grow, uh, to grow in your community base especially if the filing and management process breaks down and, and feedback is lost. Unsophisticated management of cases also means big issues for the chain of custody of the case, underpinned by a lack of auditability and effective evidentiary control. Such lackluster controls, with stu such lackluster controls staff find it difficult to get a complete picture in, in, of the case in question, not only when resolving the case, but especially after the fact when cases are reviewed or potentially called into question at a later date. Of these problems ultimately contribute to a less than satisfactory outcome from the community in which you operate and the effectiveness and efficiency with which your organisation satisfactorily resolves cases. The longer cases are left open, the costlier they become to resolve, both in money and loss of reputation. So what should good community engagement look like? It should look open. Basic functions should be automated and it should be focused on the end goal, resolution of cases to the satisfaction of both parties. I mentioned automation, it is so important to get this right, but never forget the human element in this. A very high percentage of all cases are resolved with some level of human interaction. But let the humans working for the organisation focus on what's important, resolving the case in concert with the community member, and let your systems focus on the management and work flowing of the cases. 
the mechanics of the case and management which C3 can do with complete repeatability, auditability and efficiency. And C3 never goes on holidays. The diagram shows how the community sends in feedback which is caught by an automated process which not only files the feedback in the right spot straight away but also sends an acknowledgement immediately back to the community member. The platform where it's stored is secure, has notifications, reporting and dashboarding. It audits everything and, very importantly, workflows the case to your staff. The mechanics of managing the case have been taken care of by the automated processes and is now in the hands of a human who can work with the community member to resolve the case. I like this quote, which is most stakeholders who file a grievance have certain expectations. Such expectations may be that the company at least acknowledges the problem, provide an honest response to questions about company activities, issue an apology, pay compensation, modify the contact that caused the grievance or some other, for, uh, other fair remedy. This quote highlights that community members often just want to be heard, to have their issues acknowledged and for some real interaction to occur. We must never forget this when managing our community engagement, that a software solution won't be a silver bullet in managing the community engagement process, but it certainly can provide a major support to the process. C3 is SRA's software solution that will provide all of the supporting features and mechanics to enable your staff to provide excellent community engagement. It has tailored interfaces dedicated to each party involved in the case management, i.e. your community and your organisation staff. In this demo, we'll look at both interfaces, being the community portal and the service hub, and their key features. So first we look at the community portal. This interface is where you will directly direct your community members to lodge their feedback. This feedback will come, become a service case for your staff to manage. This interface is dedicated to your community and has a URL personalised to your organisation. For this example, as this is a demo, my URL is demo.c3register.com. If I had one set up for SRA, it might be sra.c3register.com. It should be pretty straightforward for your IT department to link to this from your website or even replace what currently is your contact form uh, with this interface. The links on the bottom right are configurable so you can tailor these to reference your website and other useful sources of information that a community member may need. The, community, uh, the name community portal and the text below it are also configurable so you can name this what you like. The community portal is optimised for mobile so your community members will be able to access it on their phones too. As you can register a community member, you can submit your and view cases anywhere you can access the internet. So the first thing we want to do is, is we can register or log in. So to register, we simply put in some details um, about myself, including uh, importantly a, a username, an email address um, and a password. Once I've registered, I can then log in which allows me to, uh, to provide feedback and keep, feedback, uh, keep track of all the feedback um, associated with my users. So let me just log in. Clicking Remember Me means that I don't have to go through this process again, but every time I hit this uh, particular browser, it will send me straight into my feedback. So now I'm on the home page. You can see on the top right that I've got my username there, which I can then manage my account with, including changing my personal details. But I can also see all of my requests which I've, uh, which I've submitted, which we'll have a look at in a minute. So an important uh, part of this home page is the fact that I can actually look up case numbers to retrieve my status. So you don't have to register with the community portal, um, but if you choose, and if you don't choose to and you submit uh, feedback without registering, then you can come here at any time, put in your case number and find out the status. So the most important feature is submitting a case. Let me click on that. So what you'll notice here is that a number of details have already been filled out for me because I've registered. So once again, this is a nice little shortcut and a really good advantage to registering uh, to submit feedback. Now as we move down the page, a lot of these uh, drop-down boxes are actually configurable um, by you, the customer. So for your organisation, you can set what sort of stakeholder types you want. Uh, in here, we've got a pretty generic list. So I might just say I'm a community member. Things like country and state and city and postcode you can tailor for the areas in which you work. Um, the nature of requests. So I've got three you know, pretty common ones, uh, compliment, complaint and feedback. 
um, I'm going to raise a complaint. Um, with the street, uh, we do actually have address matching, so if I put in the actual address of where I'm located here, it finds that for me and fills it in, which is great. Um, and to actually give it um, even more accuracy, I can go through and put in my state, city, and postcode. Okay, so once I've done that, I can now select my site. Now this site, um, as I mentioned before, can be geographic or it can be um, based on uh, departments. Um, so for this one, I'm going to say HSEC, um, being Health, Safety, Environment and Community. Um, that list is configurable. Um, case type, um, so this is obviously quite important. So this can be tailored um, for your implementation. Um, and uh, once it's set up, you can also maintain these um, as you like. Um, so what I'm going to do is say create a water one. Um, based on what I've selected there, it actually gives me another uh, level down. So I can get quite specific about how we categorise our, um, our feedback. And this is great um, from an organisation point of view because you can then um, filter and report uh, by all these different types. So let's just say it's a pollution issue. So what I can do now is uh, write a description of this. So um, algae forming in the pond and the park. Um, I can also drop in files. So if I've actually taken photos and maybe I'll just select a couple of these photos, I can upload these as well. Now if you're doing this on a mobile phone, um, once you uh, click on this box or tap on this box on your phone, it actually can um, start up your camera, which you can take from your gallery uh, if you've already taken a photo, or you can actually take the photo live and put it in here. Uh, we also have a feature of saying that I'm not a robot, so um, to protect against scam, uh, spam. So now I've got to try to find some waterfalls. You don't have to do that every time. It will cache that for a little while, so um, but it will still require you to click that to prove you're not a robot. So once I've put in all of my details, I click Submit. So you can see here that it's going to send this into uh, the main C3 uh, interface for people to manage. Uh, my files are uploaded and now I've been given this number which is WAT00159. Now, one, uh, we have been working with a company called Telco Edge um, who provide um, really good uh, uh, telephony systems. So if you want, and it's not actually covered in the price of C3, but we can um, discuss this and provide a, a quote for you the ability to actually use a phone um, to, to raise cases. So you can put that phone number out to your community. They could actually ring that in. Instead of selecting a case type, you would actually put in a number that corresponds to that. Um, and then when you actually leave a message about what is um, what the issue is, it actually um, records that and attaches it to the service case. Um, so that's a really great facility and one that you could also um, you know, think about. So I've submitted that. Um, the way I can have a look at that now is if I go to my requests and I have a look at uh, algae forming on the pond in the park. So straight away um, I can log into here and, and remember I'm on my laptop at the moment. If I went home and looked on my phone uh, and logged in with my registration, I could actually see the same thing where it's up to. You can see here that there are a couple of them that have been completed. Um, so I can see at any stage, I can always see what the findings were and when, they were, when it was created, when it was closed. You see here there are, there's a few that have been open for a while, so um, what I can actually do is follow up. Um, so this allows your community members to um, effectively send, uh, and what they will do is send an alert to whoever's um, managing that either within your team or an individual to say that the community member is requesting uh, something to happen. Now as a safeguard from, the, um, from peppering your organisation, we have put a 24 hour window on that, so they can't um, click this for another 24 hours to request it. Uh, once again, it's a really handy way um, for your community members to see all of the uh, issues that they've raised uh, and where the current ones are up to. Okay, so um, you saw before how I uh, put in some um, some geographic information. Uh, we do actually have a map here. It will actually show me all of the different types of um, cases that I've raised. And you can see here that must have been a noise one. This is a water one. And you can actually see that's the one I just entered. So that has geo-referenced it um, to uh, my office, so that's uh, zoomed in there. Um, so it's actually a, quite a cool way to see, and especially if your community members are um, covering a, a, broad, uh, rain, a, a broad area, 
um, to see what type of uh, what where they have actually um, access, uh, recorded things, and to make sure that the system is actually put in the right spot. The last feature we'll look at in the community portal is the knowledge base. Um, so what I can do in here is if uh, the community member searches on case, it actually brings back a couple of cases, uh, which is uh, which has that uh, keyword in it. Now the articles that are shown here uh, are all maintainable within the, uh, the C3 platform. Um, so you can actually write uh, your own, say, standard operating procedures, frequently asked questions, um, and, uh, and policy documents, which you can actually publish um, through the knowledge base and let people search it on. Okay, so that's the features of the community portal, which we believe is a nice, clean, simple interface for community members that they can use to lodge feedback. Now that we've submitted the feedback, let's look at how we, as the organisation, manage that feedback, which is obviously from what I covered before in the, uh, in the PowerPoint presentation, is a very vital, uh, important part um, with regards to the mechanics of how that gets in and how we actually control that uh, workflow and evidence. Um, so to do that, we'll look at C3's other interface, which is the Service Hub. Okay, so as mentioned, the Service Hub will be used, to, used by the appropriate staff members within organisations to manage community feedback. Each item of feedback in the Service Hub will be known as a service case, or case for short. Users of the Service Hub can be members of teams, and teams can be assigned responsibility for the various case types which we explored in the community portal. You can also have C3 organised teams within sites, so you can geographically differentiate between your organisation's operations, or use sites to logically group teams as in departments or divisions, for example. And you can see before we had, say, a council and a HSEC um, for the sake of the demo system. Security is quite simple in the service hub. There are only three types of users. We have system managers, team leaders and officers. A system manager can change the configuration we discussed in the community portal, like stakeholder types and case types. They also have full access to all of the cases across all the teams. A team leader can manage the cases which have been assigned to their team and an officer can simply manage the cases which have been assigned to them. So let's have a look first at probably the most primary feature uh, in the service hub uh, being service cases. And this is where you spend the bulk of your time managing cases. So with the list screen, um, you can see here uh, that we have a list of all the current, showing current service cases at the moment, which we have 128 of them. We can actually change the scope of what we're looking at simply by clicking on our view and having a look, say, at all service cases. So that'll bring back both everything that's been opened and current uh, or closed. And so once that comes back, we've got 159 of them. I could also say, let's just have a look at all the ones we've closed and it would come up with the 27 of those. So it's a really easy way um, to slice and dice what we want to look at. So let's go back to current service cases. Okay, what I can also do is search across all my records. So say if I want to search for anything that referenced a dog, um, what I can very quickly do that is not just the type there, you can see you know, uh, feral dogs or dog barking, but it's actually looked at the description as well um, to see if there's any reference to that. So that's quite a powerful and easy feature to use. Um, you can see here um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a smart table, um, so it's not like a HTML table where you lose your headers. So we do have headers here which we can click on. I could use, say, open duration to sort by um, all of the, uh, the, how long things have been open. So I can see here I've got some uh, ones that have been open for a very long time, um, which would hopefully be prompting action uh, for resolution. Let's go back to create it on. Um, and what you can see here is that that very top one, the WAP00159, is actually the service case we created in the community portal. So that instantaneously um, has gone in. Um, I mentioned before in the community portal where I saw uh, the number. Uh, what's also happened in the background is that that community user who put in their email address when they registered has also been sent an email which has summarised the service case um, to acknowledge that the, the system has actually received it. Um, now I don't have to go to reports or to a dashboard to get some graphical analysis of my list here, so I can just simply click on my charts which flies out. And so what I can do here is um, I can say, let me see this by the types of cases, all of the open ones by types of cases. So it breaks it down and it corresponds to that list that we saw in the community portal. Um, I can see here that roads, for example, have the most amount of cases open. <coughs> so I can actually drill down on this. Um, you might have noticed when I click roads, it actually filtered my list. So it's already just looking at the roads one. 
Um, what I might also do is say, look, within the Rhodes one, I wonder if there's any um, predominant uh, subcase type. So I can do that. Let's do that as a pie chart and view that. So I can see there's two which are sort of sticking out, speeding uh, and potholes, um, but there's no exact one that's really standing out. Uh, once again, I can click on, say, speeding. I'm going to get all the speeding records for, so I can easily um, easily consume those. So if I click on home, that'll actually go back to all of them. I'll reset my filter and I can slide my graph away to get my list right back again. Some other <laughs> really nice features of this screen are the ability to export to Excel. Uh, so all of the service cases that I'm currently looking at uh, will be exported. Um, I can actually run reports, so run ones that are relevant to the information that I'm looking at, um, so around the current service cases or case metrics. Um, and the last feature in here, uh, which I think is yeah, you can't underestimate, is the ability to import data. So if you're actually cutting over from another system, um, whether it be stored in Excel um, or something else that you can get a feed from, you can actually import uh, your service cases from that. It's quite a simple, uh, simple task of downloading a template, um, copy and pasting all that data into that template and then loading it back into the system. So it's, it's very easy to, to actually onboard um, your data that might already exist. You could always want to use this. Um, you may not, in fact, want to use the community portal, and that's fine. Um, but the data that is coming in, say, from your current website with uh, Contact Us, um, you could actually get a, and import data into this on a regular basis. So now that we've uh, looked at the list, let's go and actually have a look at a case itself. So say the one that I just entered in, we can go in and have a look at. So I guess there's two major areas within the screen um, that we need to know. So the top part is a workflow. So you can see here there's five steps in the workflow um, and you see that there's information and, and ticks to say, yes, we have what we need to to go to the next stage. The lower part of the screen is all about all the different information and details of the case itself. So <clears throat> the same details are shown in both, but the workflow is just a, um, putting it together uh, in a logical way that we're going to manage this case and, and work it through. So you can see here all the details have come in from the community portal, including the description. Um, you can also see that um, based on all of the um, address information that the C3 has automatically georeferenced that for us, which is nice. If I actually scroll right down to the bottom, um, you'll also see that the two attachments are there as well, which is great. So the evidence is coming from the community portal and being attached to my case. <clears throat> what this also means is that at any time you can attach notes um, to the case. So I can write out um, notes or actually attach other documents. Um, but I can also view activities for this. So you can see here that any of the uh, correspondence that has automatically been sent uh, from C3 back to the community user has also been lodged um, in here, uh, which is a really, obviously a very handy you know, uh, evidentiary feature. And indeed, I can even see the detail of exactly what was sent in the email. So to actually workflow something through, um, like I said, I can see here that yes, I've, uh, I can verify this now, all the information that I need is there, um, and I can actually progress this to the next stage. So you see it's also gone from open uh, to pending. Um, so now what that means is it's pending the, um, the assigning to the investigator in the initial discussions with both the stakeholder and in internal discussions. Um, this is also, I've got an investigator here, which is the environment team. So it's been set up that um, whenever a water one comes in, it goes to us, the environment team. Um, what would have happened is that you can designate a user of the service hub to be the team leader. They will receive an email to say that a new service case has come into their team and that they need to assign it to somebody and manage it. So to actually assign that to somebody, I can actually come in and click that um, and go through and put that to a particular user. I can also do things like I can records. If I want to give it to another team, I can, or I can give it to a particular user and do that. <laughs> so now I've assigned that to a user. Um, in C3, you also have the ability to, um, at this stage when we're just um, assessing the service case to assign estimated costs. Um, and at the end, when we put in a final result, uh, we can actually put in actual costs and we can compare those and the actual cost will come into uh, looking at um, some of the analysis and the dashboards that we've got as well. So <laughs> you can see here how we can just easily um, and repeatably um, manage uh, our service cases through workflow, putting in all standardised um, 
fields um, so that we can always have some pretty uh, consistent management of our service cases no matter who's actually performing that function. Um, some other um, quite handy features of our platform are the fact that you can see here under service cases, um, if I ho hover over that, it actually gives me the ones I've recently looked at, um, so I can very quickly uh, change to those. <laughs> also, I've got further um, further functionality which I can perform on my service caps, um, things like the activities that have happened, so I can see those in isolation. Um, I can also see my audit history here. So clicking on my audit history is going to show me everything that's happened to that. So you can see right down from the bottom, it's, it's actually recorded all of the original attributes that came in for the service case. Um, it also showed that it um, was assigned to the environment team, that there's some internal stuff there with regards to um, uh, the uh, geocoding. It's also the status change that we did because we changed our stage. And it also, when we reassigned the user, it lost that as well. So you can see that it has a full audit history um, uh, for every case that gets um, managed in this manner. Um, the other thing we can do against our case is create an activity. So I could have done that in the screen we saw before. Um, indeed, if I go to all activities, I can see those. Um, or I can do it in this one, which is dedicated to activities for that. <coughs> the different activities we can do uh, are really quite broad ranging. So if we actually need to make a phone call and schedule that in, we can send a, uh, an email from uh, the C3 platform, write a letter, um, so have a, actually create an appointment, um, so there's some really pretty handy things we can do on there. So say so I want to create an appointment, uh, then I get the option to go through and, and add uh, when it's going to occur. I can also create recurring ones, uh, so on and so forth, which is very handy. What it's regarding, you know, all that sort of stuff. So all of the um, all of the interactions that occur, and I mentioned before around um, a high percentage, if not all service cases, need to be resolved with some sort of uh, human interaction. Uh, all of that interaction correspondence can be reported in our platform. All right, so I'll just go back to <coughs> the main service case screen. Um, so between the list and the, and, the, and the features on there and then being able to track that through with our case management, there's a lot of features in there which come as, as standard um, for, the, um, for the subscription into C3. Uh, the next thing I can do is actually go through and have a look at my community users. So all of the community users which are registered can be viewed and managed um, in this in this feature. You can also uh, you can also use this feature for stakeholder management. So and you can create community users in here that don't even register with the community portal. Um, so this might be to support a proactive engagement campaign so you can track correspondence, which is great. You can also see on this list here um, that I have my users in here, and I can also see my service case count. So it easily allows me to isolate. <coughs> Those, um, those community members which have um, put in the most amount of service for us. Okay. So let me select, say, um, Stu Vanderwater, which is actually me, but um, he's also my community user. Um, this screen here um, is, uh, gives you a, a basically a, a really consolidated view of that uh, community member, so I get their details. Um, if they put in their address details, it also geo-references them. Geo um, it lists all the service cases for me, so I don't need to go and search for those for that member. It's actually there already. So, uh, and also or any activities that have occurred as well. So you notice before when I was in my service case, I could create activities <coughs> relevant for that service case. Well, this allows you to put activities actually against the user themselves. So you can see here that one's been created for a phone call uh, follow-up regarding a certain campaign, which actually wasn't related to the service case, but that allows the stakeholder management. Just like the service case um, against my community user, I actually do have an audit history, uh, which will allow, if I made any changes to them, uh, will actually show those as well. So it's another um, way that can be, we can you know, make sure that there's a certain amount of integrity um, and uh, auditability for all of our records that we're managing in C3. Okay, so if I go back to uh, my workplace, uh, I can um, have a look at another main feature called activities. And so I have talked a bit about activities, both in service cases and against a community user. If I want to see all the activities in one spot, I can simply come here and that will isolate out um, all of the all activities no matter what uh, actual um, feature they were created in. So it's a really handy way um, to look at all the activities that you need to be performing um, and follow up on the phone calls that you need to make 
uh, an appointments that you need to um, need to attend, which is um, obviously a very handy uh, feature to have. <coughs> Next, if we want to, uh, and we saw before in the community portal for a, a community user who's logged in, um, I can actually see where uh, all of the cases that I've raised have been. Um, you can actually do that at a uh, an entire level uh, at a uh, all of my feedback that have come in. And so I can see here, <coughs> I can also do some filtering based on that. So if I want to uh, show me all the closed ones or the open ones, or show me all the high priority ones. <coughs> I can also show a heat map. So if I filter by that, I can actually get a heat map which allows us to isolate or look for any hotspots that might be occurring uh, within the community, which is very handy. Okay, so um, the last feature I want to show you in the Service Hub um, is obviously a, a very important one too, which is dashboards. <coughs> so C3 comes with three dashboards, which will allow you to get an overview of the cases, assist uh, with resourcing and signing, um, and that even analyse costs and case completion performance. So the first uh, dashboard, which you see here, is a service case summary. Um, so this shows a uh, number of cases categorised by different attributes of the cases, uh, such as status and priority, which you can see across the top. Uh, note that we can change the scope for the data included. Um, for example, show all the cases instead of just the current ones. So we can see here, um, this is showing us by type, uh, by uh, the, the, the actual nature of the, uh, uh, the case. So let me just show that over all service cases, for example. So that might change the mix. Uh, or even the closed ones might show us that we tend to close other ones more than others. So um, it's a really handy way to um, very easily um, look at different scopes of data uh, within the same dashboard uh, and shows the interaction of our dashboards. Um, so these um, dashboard objects uh, are also interactive. Um, so uh, take this object here, which is about service creation uh, trend, which is showing us day by day how many are coming in. And we see we've had a massive spike uh, on a certain day here. So what we can do is say work out, all right, for that day, I wonder what types of cases were created, were they all the same one, was it just a flurry right across the board? Um, so I can once again drill down and let's go by case type. And so we can see there's a bit of a mix here, but there were a lot in rows. Um, so if I want to look at that, um, I can actually isolate the data as well. Um, so if I want to see all the information behind, say, that day um, that I can, I simply just pop that out and it gives me all of the requests and the graph itself. So um, these dashboard objects aren't just um, quite um, pretty uh, but non-functional, but they are quite handy to be able to drill down and actually perform functions on as well. Um, with any of these, if you want to get a, a larger view on it, um, let's just say we go back to here, uh, I'll simply just pop that out. Um, and I can see a larger one, and then I can um, download that, take it offline. So the next dashboard I want to look at is the Assignment Manager. The Assignment Manager gives us a view of our team um, and staff member workloads. We can easily identify how many unassigned cases there are by team, prompting us to action in order to assign cases to our team members. We can also see how many cases each team member has. So say here, we can see that Daniel has quite a few. So let's drill down and see what the types are. Okay, so there's a lot of nuisance ones. Uh, the, uh, two nuisance ones is land, the road, and water. So what you might want to do is shift one of those nuisance ones to someone else to even out Daniel's workload. Um, so I'll simply pop out that list. And we can see they're all assigned to Daniel. Um, let's just take this nuisance one here. And I say I want to assign that to someone else. So assign it to another user or team, and let's keep that to Lucinda. Assign that to her. Now Daniel only has the four showing there. Right, shut that down. Um, let's go back home again. Um, and you can see here that um, I wasn't just looking at the medium ones as well, but they've gone to four, and Lucinda's now gone up to three. So I can actually use this assignment manager to look at the case loads and, and even those out. Um, it will also prompt me into action um, across here, so looking at our teams <coughs> to see the team loads are even um, and how many team, team uh, if the team leaders are also making sure that they're expediting the, um, the cases to their individual team members. 
The final dashboard I want to look at is costs and closeout. <clears throat> uh, this final dashboard um, looks at the cost recorded when resolving a case uh, and the time it took to close cases. So the bubble diagrams are representing our performance week to week in how many cases are being closed and either how long on average they were open or how much total cost they were to close. So it's a very interesting average uh, uh, and looking at a trend over time um, hopefully uh, we're starting to gain efficiencies around being able to close uh, cases um, and minimise the amount of cost that, is, uh, that we're looking at. Uh, the bottom left chart shows us our average closing times by priority um, and we're hoping to see that uh, the higher priority, the lower average time to close uh, according to SLAs which you, which you might have set. So once again we're <coughs> not just um, looking at pretty uh, diagrams, this is hopefully giving us some really good intelligence into our, our costs and our efficiency at resolving cases. Uh, what we can also do um, is that members of, uh, users of C3 can create their own dashboards. So I've created one here, um, Service Case Dashboard, uh, which brings together some of the charts that I really like across three different dashboards. I've even included um, the, the map, which once again I can have a heat layer. And so I in fact might want to set this as my default so that whenever I come in I actually go to this my own uh, dashboard instead of one of the uh, standard ones. So that's the features of the Service Hub. So we think it's a really powerful yet simple interface which will be you know, ably facilitate your community engagement processes and support your community engagement team. There is a lot of power in this interface for your team, backed by a really strong activity management, security and auditing with the added benefit of really strong stakeholder management. So to finish this webinar, we'll go through some important things you need to know. Also take note of the, our contact details in the bottom left of the slide, which will also be sent out to you. First, C3 is cloud software. That is, you don't install it, and you don't need your own hardware to run it. We'll take care of that. You simply need access to a browser and the internet. SRA has partnered with one of, if not the biggest cloud provider in the world to deliver a secure, highly available and efficient platform. This means your community and your staff can, choose, can access C3 whenever and wherever they like. Second, you only need to license your organisation's users. You can have as many community members register with C3 without charge. We've observed that it's very common for small teams to manage this function within, within an organisation. So if there is only three people managing this process in your organisation, then you only need to license three people to serve potentially thousands of customer community users. Third, and obviously really importantly, is the price. $99 per user per month, and that is it. There's no upfront setup fees, there's no extra support fees, just $99 per user per month. So if you have a team of three, this will cost you $3,500 a year to get access to both the community portal and the service hub with all the features that you saw in the demo. We think that's a really small price to pay to ensure that you're on your way to realising great community engagement. So this concludes our C3 webinar. If you would like to know more about C3, or hopefully you've seen enough and would like to sign up, please use the email on the screen. If you have the details of your local SRA sales or account manager, uh, they too can help coordinate getting you more information and, so, and or signed up. Thanks for your time and have a great day.